today's tip. And today I call it tensions without the headache um, because I know a lot of us, I know I was in the past, we're afraid to mess with our tensions, probably because we've been chastised about it in the past, who knows. To make sure that um, I can see you and you can see me, or at least I can see your comments. <laughs> And there we are. Okay, if you're out there, you might jot in a little hi or uh, make a little comment just so that I know you're there and uh, can hear me. I know that our Facebook page has about a 10 second lag behind on everything, so I'm gonna refresh it again just to make sure because I can see some comments on the phone, but I'm not seeing them uh, here on my page yet, but that's okay. I know some of you are there, so we'll go ahead and get started. As in the past, I'll just let you know, I hope you will sign up for our newsletter. That's at www.soinspiredbybonnie.com. Uh, we give out sometimes freebies. We give out you know the notifications of when we're having our Tuesday's tips and uh, sales information and new releases. So I hope you will check that out. And I still am not seeing, I know there's some going on over there. <laughs> okay. Again, if you're out there, just give me a little shout that I know you're there. I can see some something going on with my phone but I can't see it yet on my Facebook page on my little laptop here but I'm sure it'll show up. So again what I thought we would talk about today is machine tensions. Tensions without the headache and dealing with them because I as I said in the past I know um, way back when I was first learning to sew as a young girl and I had my very first sewing machine it had no embroidery back then um, it went in for service and the technician at the end of the service when I went to go pick up my machine said now I got it all set up and I got the tensions just perfect so don't you dare touch those tensions just leave the tensions alone and everything will be fine from that point on I was afraid to touch my tensions because I thought I was gonna mess up my machine well back in the day well now I'm seeing them on I'm seeing them on my desktop. I was sorry, I got interrupted, not interrupted, but uh, sidetracked, easily distracted. Um, back in the day, that was fine because we really didn't have a lot of choices when it came to threads. Um, we weren't doing embroidery at the time, and we didn't have electronic or computerized uh, machines. So there might have been a little bit of merit to the statement this gentleman was saying to me, but in reality, I wish he would have just taken, you know, the five or ten minutes to sit down and, and explain to me how tensions work so that when I ran into an issue that I might be able to fix that on my own instead of having to bring the machine to him every single time for something very minor such as a tension issue. And that's not to say all tension issues are really minor, but I just want to give you a little bit of insight so that you can... Uh, check some few minor things and possibly avoid a trip to the technician. That being said, this information isn't going to replace your tech, you know, a good technician, but it might save you from a trip there, it, um, an unnecessary trip. Again, go through these steps. If they don't work, then you know it's time to take it to the technician. So how does how does tension actually work on a, on a machine? Now I'm going to mainly gear my topic today here toward embroidery machines because that's obviously what I deal more with since I digitize embroidery designs to sell on the internet. But a lot of this will apply to sewing as well. Uh, in fact, 
when my dealer explained to me how tension was worked, a lot of it was kind of like, wah, 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 wah. you know, it was kind of <laughs> technical talk. And so after hearing it a couple of times, I thought, okay, I think I know how to make this simple for everybody to kind of get how this all works and how they play together. And how I make it work in my own head is tension is kind of like a tug of war game. You have your upper tension on one side of the rope and you have your bottom tension on the other side of the rope and they're having a tug of war game. Now whoever's the strongest will win that tug of war game and the thread will go that direction. So if your bottom thread is the strong, or bottom tension, I should say, is the strongest uh, contender in the tug of war game, the thread's gonna pull down towards the bobbin. If the upper thread is the stronger, or I should say, again, the upper tension is the stronger in this tug of war game, then the thread is gonna pull up toward the upper tension or the upper thread. So that's a little bit of, you know, oversimplification of how it works. In the upper thread, you have an upper thread tension where you have two tension discs. And they're like two little silver discs that either separate wide or go together narrow. And they, you know, depend upon how wide they are is how tight the tension is. So as you well know, when you pull up the presser foot, you know, take up lever, or excuse me, the presser foot, that releases your tension. So it makes it really wide so the thread just falls through and the thread, if you pull it when there's the foot is up, there's no tension. So it just pulls really super duper easy. When you lower the presser foot, the tensions are engaged, which means that they've gone closer together appropriately, we hope, for the thread that you have in your machine. And it's going through uh, with some resistance between those discs. So it's kind of pulling back. It's got a little strength on the upper tension. So it's pulling uh, against your bobbin thread. Same thing is going on in the tensions in, or tension in your bobbin case. In the bobbin case, there's a little slit that your thread goes through. It's between two little uh, pieces of metal and those metals are either a little bit wider apart or they can grow closer together depending upon how tightly the screw is tightened down. So again, the thread can pass through either very freely if there's no tension in that bobbin case or if it's tightened, it can be more friction and have greater pull. So it would be winning in the tug of war game. For regular sewing, we use as you well know, uh, the same thread we use in the top and the bottom thread. So there's no difference in the, the strength of the threads or the thickness of the threads because it's the same thread top and bottom. And you know the, the, the manufacturer sets it up so that it will sew at a balanced balanced tension, which means that the teams on or the team for each side, upper and lower, is pretty well balanced. So what happens? The stitch is going to look the same top and bottom no matter which side you look at it. It looks pretty much the same. With embroidery, however, we use a 40 weight thread on the top, generally speaking, and we use a much finer thread on the bottom, which is, you know, 60 to 90 weight. Now, at first I thought the bigger the number, the fatter the thread, and that's not the case. It's measured like pipe is. The more that will fit in a specific amount of space, that's the number they give. So, and I don't know exactly what, you know, space they're measuring it by, but a 60 weight thread, you can fit a lot more 60 weight thread in, a, in, the, same, in the same amount of space than you could fit a 40 weight thread. So 40 weight is thicker then the 60 weight and a 12 weight thread is even m m much more thick than a 40 or a 60 weight thread. <clears throat> so what happens when you put a much thinner weight thread in the same slot or the same space 
that it was set for a fatter thread. It's going to flow through more freely. Okay, so I'm talking about the bobbin thread right now because we're putting in a 60 weight thread instead of, say, a 30 or 40 weight uh, thread. So it's going to flow through that little space between the metal the metal gap there much more freely, which means less resistance, which means less pull. So that means the upper tension is going to win. And what does that mean? It means the upper tension is going to pull the bobbin thread to the top. And you're going to see the bobbin thread come up on the top. So that's kind of what's going on. Yes, thread weight matters. If I were to put um, a 12 weight uh, cotton thread in my upper tension to do some embroidery. I know a few years back I really was in a kick on a kick about doing red work designs but using uh, 12 weight thread because it gave more of a hand look to the embroidery than just regular four, uh, 40 weight thread. Well what happens you're putting a thread that's almost three times the weight, three times as fat as that 40 through the same amount of space so you're going to get a ton more uh, resistance and a ton more pull towards the up because it was in the upper tension slot and it's going to pull the bobbin thread to the top. So I hope that kind of makes sense how the tensions work. So can you adjust the tensions yourself or is that something that only your dealer can do? Well you can adjust the tensions yourself. With the computerized embroidery machines, it's amazing because you can tinker with the upper tension all you want and you can always set it back to default. No foul, no harm done. It's great. So it kind of, that's where I would start because it kind of takes the fear out of making some adjustments on your own of your tensions. So um, the first thing I would do though, if I noticed, for example, my bobbin thread coming to the top, let me go back a little bit. Um, I'm speaking to the Baby Lock brother folks. Years ago, we only used to get one bobbin case because that's what they always did and that's what I guess they thought they were always going to do. Even though we were using now different weights of thread in our bobbin than we used to on a pretty consistent basis. And I remember when we would get call after call after call of my bobbin thread is showing what's wrong with my machine and then people would have to come into the dealership and get this adjustment done on their bobbin case and it was kind of difficult because really truly we need two different bobbin cases for those two different types of sewing we need one for balanced thread for uh, regular sewing and then we need a bobbin case for the embroidery it really just keeps us from having to adjust the tensions all the time. And so Baby Lock and Brother decided that they would come out and start sending uh, two bo different bobbin cases with their higher end machines. And I, I don't know if the other brands do that. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't by now, um, but it really is nice. The bobbin cases are identical. There's nothing different between the two bobbin cases. The only difference is the one for embroidery is set with a little bit higher tension to pull down, uh, give it a little more strength to have a little more resistance against that, that top thread because it's a thin thread so it flows through the little tension slot a lot easier than if you were using regular sewing thread. That's the only difference. So okay, when I have a problem with the uh, tensions being off. Say my bobbin thread is showing on the top. What's the first thing I do? Well, the first thing I do is I rethread the machine. And then I go ahead and retest. Now, how do I test uh, the balance of my stitches? Well, I've heard from two different um, technicians that I should use a block built-in letter A. Of all things really simple takes about a minute to stitch out and it gives you all the different stitch angles that you'll have to deal with with embroidery and it's a nice satin zigzag 
um, so you get to see what the uh, stitches are doing. If I'm still having some issues with it, maybe I'll take some unwaxed dental floss and I'll run it through the upper tension disc just to make sure nothing got caught up there or, um, you know, there's, again, no fuzzies or a, a, a thread caught up there. And I might go back and forth just a little on the tension disc, but I always pull from top out through the bottom. I don't pull out the top. So always pull that dental floss, again, unwaxed dental floss. You don't want anything on it and pull it out through the bottom. Then I do another test A and see how that does. Notice I always do a test in between every correction that I make just to see I'm, I'm troubleshooting to see what might fix it. I don't do all of the troubleshooting at once and then do um, stitch it out because then you don't know what was wrong with it. And sometimes educating yourself as you go really helps you for future issues. So then I, as I said, I test another A and see how it does. If I still have an issue, I do the easiest fix, which is to just go to my settings on my computerized portion of the machine, which is going to adjust the upper tension. The computer controls the upper tension. It does not control the bobbin case. That's only controlled manually by you and your the screwdriver. So um, I go in and I push the little minus sign twice. I just go down a couple of notches. That's it. Less is more here when you're adjusting your tensions. And then I'll do another test So Now why would I loosen the upper tension when my bobbin is coming to the top. What I'm doing in effect is I'm releasing some resistance on the upper tension, thereby if I kind of take two, two uh, players on my tug of war team off of the upper tension side, take a couple of players off, kind of release some of that tension, that by its own default kind of makes the bobbin tension a little stronger, does it not? If there's less resistance, that gives the bottom a little more strength. So it's going to be able to pull against that upper tension a little more easily because the upper tension isn't as resistant as it was before. So that might help. If that still doesn't work and I still want to tweak it a little bit more, what I go in, I leave my sewing uh, my sewing bobbin case alone and how you know it's the sewing bobbin case is it's got a little green dot on the screw. They have painted that screw with a little bit of green paint for the Baby Lock Brother machines. On the embroidery machines they have a purple or blue dot that's painted on the inside of the bobbin case. I don't know if you can see that or not but it's painted on the inside. So what I would do with this is there are two screws, one that looks like a Phillips screw and one that looks like just your standard little tiny screw that a little tiny screwdriver would work in. Leave the Phillips screw alone. Don't need to touch that. What you want to play with, <laughs> or tweak I should say, is the little tension screw, which is the one that just looks like a little tiny regular screwdriver would work in. And what I like to do is I like to aim it straight up and down so it's like at 12 o'clock. And then I'll take my screwdriver, this one's a little bit big for it, but I could put in the corner of it and it would still work. And I will turn it 1 8 but no more than 1 4th of a turn at a time. And I would turn it 1 8 test it, and then maybe turn it another four, uh, another eighth, making it a grand total of a fourth of a turn, and retest my A and see how it, it did. But I wouldn't do more than that. The very most I would probably ever do on something like this where I was testing is probably up to maybe a, a little over a fourth of a turn to maybe a half a turn, but boy, that's, that's an awful lot. I don't think I'd wanna go that much. 
Um, but maybe up to a half of a turn, and then I'd probably be thinking, you know, maybe I need to take this to the dealer. If it's still having some issues, there might be something just hung up somewhere along the path that's actually the problem and not, not what I thought it was. But I did do some test sews here just to kind of give you an idea of what I was sewing with. Um, I know that the Baby Lock Brother machines come with finishing touch in uh, bobbin thread. And this is what they've calibrated the machines to for the embroidery bobbin case. Does that mean you can only use finishing touch thread? No, it does not. All it means is that you may have to tweak your tensions just a little bit if you're using a different type of bobbin thread than what they've calibrated the machine for. These machines are meant to sew just about anything on the market as far as thread goes. So if you have a dealer that's telling you, you know, that that's just terrible thread, you shouldn't be using that. Um, chances are, if you've got that thread from a good re reliable source and it, it is a, a decent thread, um, they're just probably trying to sell you the thread that they sell. So kind of be aware of that, that some people out there will do that. So anyway, okay, so what I did was I sewed three A's here, and I didn't iron it or anything. I just wanted to see how this was doing with its tensions. The first one I stitched out using my uh, bobbin thread, uh, not the finishing touch, the bobbin thread that I purchased, and... Um, the sewing bobbin case because I know sometimes we forget to change out the bobbin cases and this is what we ran into a lot when they only ship one bobbin case with our embroidery machines because invariably those machines are set for regular sewing they're not set or calibrated for embroidery and the tensions should be a little bit different okay it doesn't look bad from the front it looks pretty darn good actually but when I turned this first A over if you look at the back on the left side here it is really close to um, let me get it over there it's really close to coming off and it could possibly start showing on the front side so it's not going to happen all the time but it you know, with every machine, because every machine is a little bit different. They all have their own little personalities. Um, but it's really right and close, especially towards the bottom of the A down here. Down toward the bottom, you can really see that it is super duper close, and I could run into some issues. On the second A, I stitched it with my bobbin thread and uh, the embroidery bobbin case. And you can see it did much better. It's not a true, what I call, 30-30-30 split, which is what your embroidery should be. It should be at least 30% 30, 30 uh, embroidery thread, then 30% bobbin thread showing, and then another 30% embroidery thread. The only purpose of the bobbin thread is to hold the stitches onto your fabric. The thread needs to be thin so it's not sticking out and bulky underneath your garments or project. It's all decorative stitches, whereas with sewing, you want equal strength top and bottom to hold your seams together really well. Same with quilting uh, or uh, garment sewing. But with embroidery, it's all decorative stitching. It's just uh, on the top of a project, so it doesn't need the this, this balance strength like a regular sewing uh, tension would. So on this one, what I did here was I did the simplest tension fix of all, which was I went to my embroidery settings and my embroidery tension within the computerized portion of my machine, and I went down two notches. I pushed the negative button twice. It was set at zero, zero. Uh, the defaults on the Baby Lock Brother machines are with a back, uh, excuse me, a black background with white lettering. And when you get off of default, you'll notice that the background turns gray and the lettering, I believe, turns black. 
so it kind of reverses. That's one way, easy way to tell if you're on default settings or off. So I went down two little notches, or pushed the minus sign twice, and I stitched it out again. And on the left side of the A, you can see where I am closer to my true 30, 30, oops, I have this backwards. <laughs> I'm closer to my true 30, 30, 30 split on that bobbin uh, thread, which is what you want. You can go up to a 40, 20, 40 split. That's fine. As long as you've got more embroidery thread wrapping around to the bottom, that's the only purpose is to hold that bobbin, or excuse me, hold the decorative stitches in place. That bobbin thread, it's just, its purpose is to be out of sight, out of mind, not being bulky, just being there. So I hope that kind of gives you some, some tips on tension and how to set them and not be afraid to make some little tweaks if you run into a tension problem. Now let's say that you went out and you stitched a project and it's in your hoop and you stepped out and you step back and you see some bobbin thread on top and it's on your project and it's already a done deal. Is there some way to salvage that? Well, yeah, there is. Um, my dealer sh showed me this trick that she learned from the commercial folks years and years and years ago. I got these, gosh, I've, I've had them over 10 years. They're um, textile markers. This is what I got. I believe I got them from Marathon Threads many, many years ago. I know that um, the embroidery store sells uh, a package of these textile markers. I believe Hobby Lobby sells textile markers. If you go where they sell the permanent fabric markers that uh, people use, quilters use for their quilt labels, that will work really well uh, too. And what you do is wherever the bobbin thread is showing, like this is red th red thread I would get a marker as close as I could now I know I'm doing the wrong side to this but I would come in and and my marker might be kind of old and a little bit dry so it might not be wanting to uh, ink up very well but you're gonna go in and just touch up the bobbin thread and if you look at my, I know I did that kind of quick, um, but if you look at that, the bottom crossbar of this bottom A, you can see how you really can't tell that there was bobbin thread there. Um, and that's even on the wrong side. So imagine if this were the right side and you had just a little bit of bobbin thread showing, really, you touch that up with your fabric textile marker no one's gonna know. It's it. It'll save your project. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you don't have to stitch over it again, uh, like sometimes we used to do. We'd go back up the machine and stitch over it again. That's not adding any more bulk or anything like that. But it really comes in handy. I think every embroiderer needs some textile markers in their uh, resource center uh, to just in case you're sewing in the middle of the night and have something like that happen. Um, so let's go over here and see if we have any questions about tensions. <clears throat> Get my computer over here. <laughs> Val Clements just wrote in. She has a great idea. She said, Sharpie permanent markers work well too. I have very fine ones. Uh, she's from Canada. Oh my goodness. Hi, Canada. <laughs> that, yes, I think that the Sharpie markers would because they're very permanent. But um, I believe they only come in black. I might be mistaken on that. But that would be great on if you just needed a little touch up with some black. Um, Irene said she loved my explanation. This old lady learned a lot today. <laughs> well, you're more than welcome. I'm glad you learned something. I mean, we've all been there, 
haven't we, where someone has scared us to death about tensions. And once you know how it works, it's, it's not so scary. It's just a little bit of troubleshooting, just a little bit. And KJ said that she uses the Sharpies too. Oh, she also said they come in all colors. That's good to know. Good to know because they're you can find Sharpies anywhere at, at any office supply store. Um, oh my goodness, they're going so fast I can't catch them. <laughs> okay, I've got several saying they come in colors. Marilyn says that she's used jelly pens in a pinch. I think that would be really good too. Yeah, there's all kinds, as long as the marker is permanent and isn't gonna wash out or bleed on your fabric, um, that'd be great. In fact, you could just test it on a little scrap of fabric, you know, put it on a little scrap, scrub it in the sink, you know, and see if it's gonna bleed on you. And if it doesn't bleed, it's going to work great. Uh, the, the big thing is you want something with a really fine micro tip or a, a nice sharp point on it. Um, okay. Let's see. Loretta said if the tension is off a little bit if the tension is off a little bit, but the bobbin thread is showing on top, does it affect the top any? I'm not sure I understand the question uh, of the, does it affect the top any? Does it affect the top tension? No. Um, if, the bobbin, if the bobbin thread is showing on top, it doesn't really it doesn't really affect the top tension but you have two ways to correct the bobbin thread showing on top one is as i ex uh, explained before you can lower the tension on the top thereby releasing the pressure or the resistance from the top which gives the bottom tension more strength to pull or you can tighten the screw only an eighth of a, of a turn or a quarter of a turn, no more than a quarter of a turn at a time before testing. Um, and that gives the bobbin more strength to pull down. Having said that, another reason I like to adjust the top tension besides it being really super duper easy and less fearful is that the, the tighter you make everything tension wise, like maybe you're tightening up the top and then you're tightening up the bottom and you're going back and forth, back and forth. If you get everything too tight, you're gonna have more puckers. And so by just releasing the top a little bit, um, I'm, not, I'm not risking creating more puckers by making something too tight. And I hope that makes sense, but that can affect it too. Um, but no, um, the bobbin thread showing up on top I, if I understood your question correctly, it doesn't really affect the top, um, although you could correct it by the top, possibly, as I showed in the, the A's that I stitched out. Um, Ginger said, would you suggest purchasing a second bobbin case for non-brother machines? That's an excellent question, Ginger. I would. Personally, I would. I remember back in the day um, with, you know, the embroidery machines, we used to sell Janome, and and I had a Janome 9000, and I, I brought it in, and my dealer sp said, you know, if this becomes an issue and you're going back and forth between sewing and embroidery and you notice your bobbin tension or bobbin thread coming to the top, he recommended that I just get a second bobbin case, adjust it, for uh, embroidery. He said that he would be more than happy to adjust it for embroidery, you know, if I purchased it from him. And I also recommend taking your embroidery bobbin thread uh, because your the bobbin thread you use might be different than what your dealer uses. uses. So take in the bobbin thread you like to use and ask them to adjust that tension on that bobbin case for you, the 
the bobbin case that you buy for your embroidery. And then I would mark it. I would take a little dab of fingernail polish and mark it with an E or, you know, your Sharpie pen and mark it with an E or some dot on the inside bottom of the bobbin case here, uh, like the Baby Lock Brother folks do. Just put a little dot in there just to make it so you know when you go to load it. Oh, yeah, that's my embroidery uh, bobbin case. So, yeah, I would. Um, if you're bouncing back and forth and you have a little issue with this, make it easy on yourself. Uh, that way you don't have to adjust it every time. Um, also, I've been told, uh, I remember a brother uh, educator once telling me to go ahead and once you have your bobbin case set for embroidery, and that's the one you're going to use for embroidery, you might want to put a little dot of clear fingernail polish over the screw because with all the use that we have uh, with our embroidery machines and all the sewing and rotations they do, sometimes those screws can work themselves loose. So that I thought was a pretty good hint. You don't need a big blob, you just a very tiny little dot just to kind of hold that screw in place. Um, Janice said that mine is the bobbin is mostly on back and very little top threads. I have tried doing the top tension. Do I need to do the bobbin tension? Janice, that's an excellent question. Um, I've seen it where it's just a teeny tiny fine line on some uh, brother lock and baby lock machines, or brother lock, brother and baby lock machines uh, that come out of the factory. I've seen them with a very fine line on the back, a pretty fine line. Um, and what you could do is you can do one of two things. You can raise the top tension just a hair so the top tension has a little bit more pull against your bobbin um, it, or you could loosen the bobbin uh, tension just a hair. Now how do you know what's loosening, lo what's making it loose and what's making it tighter? I forgot to mention lefty loosey righty tighty. So that's how I remember which way to turn so that I'm going the correct direction. Righty tighty Lefty Lucy. Excellent question. Ginger said, thank you. I'm sure my dealer will adjust also. Yes, they will. Um, sometimes there's always a bench charge. Sometimes, you know, different dealers will charge different amounts. And sometimes dealers won't charge at all. So, uh, this just gives you some options, especially if your dealer's not open <laughs> when you run into the problem. So it's it's good to have options. And some people don't live very close to a dealer. So it's kind of nice to be able to fix small issues on your own. Again, if these small little tweaks don't work, you need to take it into your technician and have it checked out. Um... Deborah said, do you think some machines prefer bobbin weight thread rather than the same weight thread as you have on top? That's an excellent question. Diana, I think I think it all has to do with how the tension's set more than the machine itself. Um, I really think it has to do with the tug of war that's going on between the top tension and the bottom tension. Um, because... I, to have a balanced thread top and bottom is more just for your sewing tension. You definitely want a bobbin thread for embroidery. And the reason I say that is because the purpose of the bobbin thread is, is to, to not be seen, to not add bulk, and to just hold the pretty decorative threads in place and to be more reasonable. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You're spending twice as much money if you're using the uh, embroidery thread on the underside. So just to, you know, those are my opinions on the matter. Well, I think, oh, Diana said she cannot find a brother dealer in my area, so I guess we'll have to call brother and order from them. That's a possibility. I think there are a few dealers that you can order uh, bobbin cases online. Um, they will sell those and ship those to you online as well. There's no problem with that. They just can't sell 
across state or territory on embroidery machines unless you've been there. So um, for, for supplies like that, you can get them just anywhere. You don't have to get them only through the Brother D um, company. <clears throat> okay. I think... Let's see. B says, sometimes I embroider with 40 weight in the bobbin. Do you think I should change from the embroidery bobbin case to the plane? B, I think you should use bobbin thread in your bobbin. Now, having said that, if you're doing freestanding lace or something where you want, um, like an in-the-hoop project where you want the satin stitch to be the same, <clears throat> excuse me, on the top and bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, If you have where you need the, the machine embroidery to be the same on the top and bottom because you'll see both sides, absolutely use the embroidery thread top and bottom. But if I were to just have embroidery on my shirt, I would never use embroidery thread in my bobbin. Um, do you think I should change from the embroidery bobbin case to the plain? No, I wouldn't. Let's see. If you changed, no, I wouldn't change to the plane because then you're going to have equal tension. And for embroidery, you want it. I guess it would depend on the project you were doing. If you were doing it in the hoop and you wanted the tension to be balanced, you wanted everything to be the same top and bottom, and you wanted it to look the same top and bottom, that would be the exception to the rule. I think you could use your standard. Um, sewing uh, bobbin case and have an equal uh, tension and therefore therefore everything would look the same top and bottom but if you're wanting that embroidery thread to pull to the bottom then I recommend using the bobbin case I hope that made sense if not let me know and we can discuss it further in the comments but I, I think I understand now where you're coming from and in that instance, I might try just the regular sewing. You can always do a test and see which way you prefer the look on a little test and see how that goes too. Uh, let's see, Deborah said, yes, I do always recommend bobbin weight thread for free motion embroidery. Stitches are always more smooth. Thank you for your thoughts. I have a finicky machine that I fight with daily <laughs> when having to change operations. I will work on my tension more and see if I can make it better. Yeah, some machines are a little bit cantankerous. They're kind of like men, I think. <laughs> they could be a little opinionated. <laughs> but, you know, the more we know about their idiosyncrasies, the better we are at tweaking things and, and getting through it. And it makes the whole sewing process, I think, a lot more enjoyable when you know a little bit more about what you're doing so you know how to correct it on your own instead of sort of at the mercy of someone else fixing it for you and having to wait on their time frame to get to it which might be two weeks down the road so I'm not always the most patient person <laughs> in the world <laughs> um, I think uh, B said that she usually does it with freestanding lace. Okay, that, that makes sense. I'm, I'm with you now on that. I think that would be a good exception where you might try the regular sewing case because it would have a little more pull, so it would be more of a balanced tension and look identical top and bottom. So that might be a good exception place to use your um, embroidery thread in the bobbin and with the sewing bobbin case. Um, I can see that. But see, it's thinking through the whole process of the tensions and how they work against each other or with each other that you can make educated guesses of how the project will come out. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Just kind of um, learning more about it so that we can make better educated guesses on you know, how we think the machine's going to react to a different thread you know, that we decide to use. Well, I think we've answered all the questions. If I haven't, I'll be checking back <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, got a frog in my throat. I'll be checking back 
and I'll uh, answer your questions in the comments. So don't don't feel bad if you think of something, you know, an hour or two from now or what have you, or as soon as we sign off. I'll also repost this on the YouTube channel as well as our Pinterest page. So for if you have some friends that you think might like to see this, go ahead and share this with them. If they don't do Facebook, let them know that they can find this information on YouTube or, as I said, the Pinterest page. So until next Tuesday, have a good week. See you soon. Bye-bye.